Assalamualaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullah. InshaAllah before we start say that we appreciate everyone's questions and alhamdulillah for those who, who can ask them, alhamdulillah if sometimes we answer with a little bit of a sarcastic smile, don't pay attention to that it's just some of the, the funniness but we appreciate greatly all the questions and, and mashaAllah it's a great service to the people whom are listening and, and participating so alhamdulillah forgive me if sometimes I answer with something of a sarcastic sound or something but it's not meant to be that. Sometimes I go back and listen and say, oh that was maybe a little bit too sarcastic or funny or… but the questions are, are greatly appreciated inshaAllah. Allah bless those whom, whom are asking and those whom are not asking and those whom won't ask. <laughs> uh, yes Sayyidi. Yes sir. Uh, sometimes we hear waves electrical waves when people talk. What is this? It feels like it affects the heart. Alhamdulillah. Don't tell anyone <laughs> Yeah, that any, every… <laughs> how to explain that Allah can open anything He wants. So alhamdulillah if, if you're meditating, contemplating and you're sensitive to energy, feeling an energy then alhamdulillah. You know don't, don't explain it to people, don't express it to people. And that everything is an energy, everybody puts out a, a wave of energy, of uh, an emotion, that's what we said that the shades, they're, they're tuning fork. So in a music store or music school you'll go and they'll have a tuning fork which are those things that two pieces of metal on a rod, you go and they put it next to the other fork and it makes the fork vibrate. You didn't hit both of them, you can hit one of them and begin to tune the other one. You hear a similar vibration start to happen, means our life is about this vibration. So by accompanying a shaykh whether you're in person or on live, when you're doing zikr with them, every zikr they're doing, every chanting they're doing, every talk they're doing is an energy and vibration going out that when you meditate and contemplate you're taking that and synchronizing your, your sound system which is your soul, your soul is based on sound, it's light. So it's the most purified capturing of energy. So when you meditate with them means his vibration is coming onto your soul. When he speaks what they call resonates with you, it's at the same frequency. That's why the soul of people are connected to the shapes. If their resonance is not the same, they say, I turned it on, I heard what you said, I was repulsed, I changed the channel. Because your vibration is like jazz music which we cannot stand that sound. It's too coconut and too up and down and all over the place makes people nervous. The sound is not a correct vibration as a result if you come into the presence of that shaykh, your, your sounds are not rhythmic. And that's important, that's why sound is important in your meditation. That you can tell as soon as you meditate, sit you want to make somewhere peaceful, put different sounds on. Put some crazy jazz and sit, you feel your heart is, is now palpitating, you're getting nervous because it's a very bad vibration. And if other people, younger people are in another room listening to bad sounds and bad music, again your heart is moving and it's becoming agitated from that sound. So your heart is a very powerful instrument for the soul that picks up tunes, picks up vibrations and that's what the whole meditation and sound frequency and all of these vibrations are all based on the world of light. So that when you meditate you're peaceful, you took your soul to a beatific vibration, it chanting, making salawats. Of course then when somebody from the Muhammadan light begins to speak and teach or, or make zikr, your soul resonates with them, they're on the same frequency and they feel the vibration of that frequency and that frequency can bring them to a state of ecstasy and peace. Because as soon as the tajalli coming upon the shaykh, when you are in sync with that tajalli, you're feeling his emanation. When the emanation is rising and they begin to cry, you begin to cry. When they're jovial then Allah says, at every moment I'm in a new tajalli. 
So if you if you visualize the shaykh, one minute he's laughing, he's crying, he's happy, he's sad, he's this, he's that. He can go through 20 different emotions within a 30 minute talk because of the tajallis and the energies that are subtly dressing his heart and soul. Those whom are meditating they're attuning to his reality and they can feel the vibration. Say, when you cried I cried, when you laughed I felt like laughing because this is the vibration that's coming and that vibration allows the knowledge to enter very deep into your soul so that it's burned into the soul which is like a CD, I don't have, I don't have even CD anymore but like a digital recorder so that it's digitized onto your reality from the reality of the shaykh and the frequency of the shaykh inshaAllah. And that's why you don't keep bouncing around to too many different people because you're trying to synchronize your connection so that your connection is strong and the vibration of that shaykh is, is unified with your own vibration and you feel that energy and that connection. Those whom have that connection they can't bounce around. They can't go here and there left and right because they're not then really connected, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, We live in an idol worship region and we are the only Muslims living there. Uh, Their religious chants and sounds are always coming into our home. Does this have a negative effect on us and what can we do? <coughs> InshaAllah you, 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 uh, however long you've been living there or you've been surviving so alhamdulillah that you know you can continue the practices that you, you practice and, and make the connection that you can, you can connect to. And inshaAllah Allah, Allah protect you and dress you and, and, and keep you in a, in a good condition. It's always good to be around people of like mind and like practices. So that if one time you can be around a, a group of people, a community that, that has a belief similar to your belief then alhamdulillah if that's not a feasibility and that's not possible then alhamdulillah Allah has guarded you to, to date and Allah inshaAllah continue to guard you and do your practices and, and make your energy strong in your residence and in your apartment and Allah inshaAllah to protect and to continue to dress you and, and bless you in that uh, environment. But the natural inclination is always to go where I can be around like-minded people. So that doesn't only have to be based on people of a belief but people of a practice. So if somebody's living in an area where they're all sort of hardcore gang members and bad environment so then you know the continuous prayers, Ya Rabbi provide an opening for me to leave this environment so that I can survive in a more peaceful environment inshaAllah open something and an opportunity for that person to migrate. So migrate is a… and movement is a great sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad and the lives of the shaykhs have always been in movement, they're always migrating. They have to go here, go there, here, there and that's a sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad And there's a lesson in migration, there's a lesson in moving, there's a lesson in travelling that anytime you move and travel you become more familiar with this whole world and Allah's creation and characters and cultures and personalities of people and opens one opens one one's mind and heart to the the variety of people and how they worship and how they act and how they carry themselves so in the beginning stages of the shaykhs and and students it's important to travel before all this covid so that you can see the customs of people. People in Turkey may be praying and worshipping in one way, have cultural aspects of their practices but that may not be the same in Indonesia, Malaysia in America or anywhere else in the world. So then seasoned people should have been travelling everywhere to understand the cultures of people, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa how to tell if a flame is spiritual flame or a satanic flame? How to tell if a flame is spiritual or satanic? A 
I think both flames are a flame that we are entering into and not to fear. Means that a, a spiritual flame, a spiritual difficulty and testing that's something different. So it means we're testing and whatever our faith is in life we have to enter within it. This flame that they're talking about and what is in reference to dajjal is the flame of fear. Because dajjal is going to operate not based on faith, so these are not aspects and examples of faith. Anytime you mention the person of deceit we're talking about aspects of fear because they're devoid of faith, they don't deal with faith, they actually want to pull faith. So he grants his people his eye of light is destroyed. So he has no, no light to give to people, he only gives them the hayat al-dunya that I'll grant you an amazing dunya. You know they sign up with him and, and get all this cash and money and all these crazy things because that's all he can offer them. But on their contract they sign that they have no right to the hereafter. And Allah says they sold for a very small price, for 30 years of life to the eternity of uh, eternity. It's a aspect of eternity as a linear that is has no beginning and no end. For this little dot of 30, 40, 50 years they don't even live more than 30, 40 years without becoming sick and dying. That you sold your soul. But these are an aspects of fear. So when anytime a fire of fear is being presented to us to fear this, then there must be a secret in that fear from Prophet that, don't fear that, that's not something you have to fear. So when they show themselves, oh these, these demons are going to be coming on earth, no well, this not to fear them but to fear that you're good with Allah and Allah is going to send support. So then everything is then based on that. Now the fire of hardship that's again something different, that's based on my path of faith everything is going to be like a fire of difficulty in which again I enter into that fire and that should burn away all of the, the dunya and become a fire of ishq and love of the Divinely Presence and not to make it a fire of fear. That's why قُلْ يَا نَحْرُ كُنِي بَعْدًا وَسَلَامًا that Nimrod which was the Pharaoh of that time made a fire and told Sayyidina Ibrahim, I'm going to throw you into that fire. Same system of the dajjal, I'm going to throw you into that fire. And he stood on the, the catapult and then threw him into the fire. But with قُلْ يَا نَعْرُ كُنِي بَعْدًا وَسَلَامًا Allah made the fire with the secret in it and that secret is the love, قُلْ يَا نَعْرُ means say and power of qul onto this fire. Badan wa salaman means the reality of Prophet came into that fire and made a shield for the reality of Sayyidina, Sayyidina Ibrahim for it to be cool and peaceful in, in that existence. So everything in this life is about throwing a fire at us and making us angry, throwing a fire and making us angry and then keeping our resolve, keeping our salawats, keeping our practices. And to have the, the love for Sayyidina Muhammad that makes everything to be cool and peaceful within our being inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh What is the reality of near death experience where people who have been declared dead for several minutes come back to life? Your mouth and qabl and mouth. This is the before they even understood these things, the Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq was teaching that the 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 mouth and qabl and mouth is to reach a station of death before death. That's where the the state of of uh, of your being is completely sort of dying in this material world. Your zero point energy in which everything is shutting down and. Allah reverses the contract of your reality that the power of your soul comes out and begins to govern the physicality and that you're operating more like somebody who died on this earth but you're still walking. Means your soul is coming out, you're, you're, you're hearing and sensing with your soul. You hear what people don't hear, you see what people don't see, 
you speak where people don't speak, you feel what people don't feel because they're using their body and material and you're using your spirituality and your soul and that's the mouth of Qabli mouth. When Allah will give them little samples of that, they enter into states of death, accidents, calamity in which they understood that they left the body. And that can happen also through meditation, they can meditate and feel themselves leaving their body, parking the body and then being free and moving with their soul inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa We are getting trained about how to respond in difficulties. What about relief? What if something good happens? What are we supposed to do? Is relief actually bad for spirituality? Getting trained in, in to difficulty? Respond to difficulties. Yeah, I think the world is in a type of difficulty but relief doesn't need training. When, when everything's good people know how to celebrate the good and how to experience the good. So that the good doesn't need an explanation. Everyone naturally knows how to you know enjoy a happy time and spend time with, with people whom you love and uh, how to spend your bonus and how to enjoy your good health and all these things. It's the parts of difficulty that people need explanation on how not to give up hope and how to connect to Allah's oceans of power, not to enter into despair because they watch the news all day long. So when you don't enter into despair so that you have hope and that people understand this. If you go back to the comments on the videos from the zikrs last night and many nights, you hear that people say, well I didn't understand that, oh that I have to keep struggling, I thought maybe I was going to leave the religion because nothing seems to be working for me. No, no because uh, success on television from Dajjal is something different. That to get a big contract, big home, big this, big that, that's from Dajjal's uh, audience and that's what he gives his influence. For Allah it's how much you're going to struggle. You know how many times you're going to get knocked around and Allah wants to see you get up. So I said, there's movies that can make you cry when you see like a young boxer is a beating him, beating him, beating him, he keeps going down. Poor guy, he doesn't give up. And then that's the characteristic that Allah inspire within your heart to be like that because that's the hero. Not the one who hit somebody with one hit and knocked everybody out, no, no. Allah's hero is the one that keep taking the difficulty but always standing, that will not go down. You cannot take that person down. And you know, then Allah send us support and pow one knockout, everything's finished. But the, the, the character of, of you know how many times you can get up is important. So when people hear that they understand and their faith becomes strong that, no, no my faith should be good, Allah loves me. It's about how many times I can get, get up, not about how many times I've succeeded. Because success with Allah is about how many times you can get back up, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Is our mind controlled by our ego? The mind controlled by the ego? Yeah definitely. That's why we said the heart and the mind are in a fight right now. So the, the, these two elements are in a continuous battle. The mind is trying to operate the body and the mind is attached to the nafs and shaitan. And the heart, if you clean it and purify it, is attached to the soul and Allah's kingdom will enter into the heart, not to the mind of the servant. So the mind has to be emptied but the ego is occupying the mind. So that's why the people whom use their mind too much and their knowledge is through memorization and the mind, what happened is the Alzheimer. Alzheimer's is that a person who used the faculty of their brain too much and burned all the circuits within the brain too much and didn't have an energy within the heart to power their head but basically operated from their head and most likely 
neglected their heart. So that their mind was the only focus. And Allah says, then we turn them into a feeble state. They were powerful people, famous people and then Allah returned them back into a feeble state because the mind was too strong. But spirituality is teaching that, no actually you should shut your mind off and keep telling yourself that's the whole talk for tonight. My mind is hearing a fire from the news and turn your head off, it's not true. If you turn your head off, your heart should have a power. When your heart has power, your heart begins to send the signal to your head and then you see what Allah wants you to see, you understand what Allah wants you to understand. Because Allah describes in Hadith of Qudsi, I become the hearing in which you hear. But that's only if your heart has been ignited, I become the seeing in which you see. So Allah is then describing, I will overtake your head. If you use your head, Allah won't be your hearing and seeing because that's you hearing and seeing and you speaking. If you shut your head off, then the Hadith al Qudsi is that you did the fa'at, now you do your actions with love. You learn from the shaykh how to meditate, I become your hearing because you're meditating, contemplating. I become your seeing, light of Allah is entering into your soul to see and I become your speaking. I mean I become your breath, I become the hands in which you touch and the feet in which you move. So much so that you become Rabbaniyoon and you have power of kun fayakun. So means that all of those realities Allah is sending to the heart and then the heart will then reflect to the head that has been turned off. That's why, La ilaha illallah. So yes, and if you don't do that system, who's using the head? Is the nafs. That's why all these scientists, professors and all, all these people who have studied immensely with their head, they're very head strong and they think everything is from their head, they know everything but the heart has nothing. Whom Allah loves are those whom their hearts are lit and they studied these realities and these sciences but with a heart filled with faith then they are kamil, they're becoming complete. Both their hearts are filled and their, their minds are filled with realities and these become the great Sufis of the past that brought Al-Jabra, Ibn Sina brought medicine. How they bring it? They, they, they were the people who didn't know anything? No, they are immense in faith and then studied medicine. So they brought immense realities based on their faith. And same with math and mathematics and science has to have a heart filled with faith and then Allah blossoms that knowledge into knowledges that nobody could understand from their time inshaAllah. But not just people for their head and no heart, it's the people who had immense hearts inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifun wa salaamun al-mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen